Well, it was more than 15 years ago when I was a professor and also uh, the research director at Sony Computer Science Lab. I started to feel somewhat, somewhat uncomfortable about the methodology of science. Uh, I often question myself whether the life and intelligence can be broken down into parts. We know the double helix structure of genes and neural networks of brain, but we, can we reconstruct life and intelligence from them? When the internet spread and new application programs are added to the network to form ultra-distributed infrastructures, how one can know the entire system and its behavior and assure the dependability of each infrastructures. When we moving into the 21st century, the global environmental issues stood out. Many researchers addressed these issues to draw conclusions in their own way. In most cases, however, the solutions were rather one-sided and sometimes caused other new issues. For example, Insecticides increased the crops but destroyed biodiversity and eventually decreased the total crops in the area. The generation of biofuel seemed to have energy crisis, created food problems and so, so forth. It is true that many important problems have been solved by the end of the 20th century, however, Plenty of problems still remain unsolved. Might there be something that could not be addressed by the conventional scientific methodology? And many of this something have impact in the problems to be solved from then on. These unsolved problems seem to have two common characteristics and can be categorized into one class. The first characteristic is that each problem is in an integrated system consisting of numerous mutually interrelated subsystems. In many cases, we do not even know what subsystems are involved in the problem. The second one is that these problems are in a system that interact with its outer world. The class of problems with these two common characteristics is defined as open systems problem. The structure of an open system may change as time proceed, and the entire behavior of an open system emerges from all interactions among its subsystems. In contrast, a closed system is close to its outer world. It consists of subsystems but the structure is simple and fixed. In fact, every real system in the world interacts with its outer world, at least through gravity, temperature, and so on, and has components which interact with one another. In this sense, they are all open systems. So what exactly is a closed system? A closed system is a system that can be approximated and treated as a closed system. An open system is a system that cannot. The methodology of modern science was established by Descartes in the 17th century. This methodology first defined the domain of a problem, reduces the problem involved, so the true nature of the problem becomes clear, and discovers the underlying principle of the domain. When the domain of a problem is too large for us to easily reduce the problem, it is decomposed into smaller elements that are reduced to discover their basic principles, and hence it is called reductionism. As you may have now understood, 
Reductionism is applicable only to closed system problems. Reductionism is not applicable to an open system problem, since it cannot be decomposed and reduced easily due to its openness to the outer world and its complex, ever-changing internal structure. If you apply reductionism carelessly to an open system problems, some important properties that I referred to as something may be lost and the problem cannot be solved. This is the reason why I felt uncomfortable in 15 years back. We were trying to solve open system problems by means of reductionism. However, historically, since the 17th century, reductionism had been used widely by showing its power to solve various problems time and again, and people believed in reductionism. The area of science was broadened and also divided into sub-areas to deepen each subject, and science became expert in their sub-areas. It was okay by itself, but this had led many scientists tend to think that reductionism was the only approach to science. They just de uh, deepened the area without seeing the whole problem. At the same time, we didn't know how we could approach to open systems problem. Now is the time to break the spell of reductionism, to face the complex problems that remain unsolved. It is necessary to do this. We need a scientific methodology in which all the mutual relationships of subsystems are kept as they are, and problems are solved while keeping systems alive or in operation. For this purpose, I would like to propose open system science. What was lacking in the past approaches to address open system problems, I believe, was the perspective of management. That is to say, the viewpoint of comprehending, coping with, and keeping up with the temporal changes of overall problems while grasping the whole. Not the viewpoint of understanding the status of system at one point in time, or recognizing the changes over time by picking up one system phenomenon. Management is to find the best way and to perform the best effort to make a system survive with the limited knowledge obtainable from the internal observer's view. The internal observer's view means that the system is open to its outer world. Then we, observers, are in its surrounding system, and therefore, we cannot know everything that may happen to the system. This perspective emphasizes the difference between the methodology of open system science from that of closed systems, in which we can take the external observer's view. We have long believed that notion of management inhabits a totally different sphere than science. But when think about it, the global environmental problems is how to sustain the Earth. In other words, how to manage Mother Earth. What is life science if not the management of life? Animals are always pursuing next best solutions when the total solutions are unobtainable. And to extend their lives and to ensure the survival of their descendants. Efforts are also needed to counter service outages and deliberate attacks on the immense internet-connected social infrastructure, and future upgrades and modification must be taken into consideration. Here again, a management perspective is essential. So, to pursue solutions to the open system problems, a three-perspective approach is required. Analysis to pursue the basic principle of things. Synthesis to build up 
the whole from the elements and management to sustain the whole system. This three perspective approach is the essence of the open system science methodology. Not enough time is left for me to go into detail about how this methodology works effectively and has already made breakthroughs to problems, but I'd like to touch upon a few examples. Besides these research achievements, we have started to pursue the means of solving open system problems in a more direct manner called open system simulation. It is a flexible simulation method to, to the change of the problem structures, which happens typically in open systems problem. It took more than 15 years to dissolve my uncomfortable feeling by proposing this methodology of open system science. I believe this methodology, including the management perspective from the outset, in addition to analytic and synthetic perspectives, can be applicable to a wide range of real problems that we need to solve now for us and for the next generation. Thank you very much.